Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. And if you've been following along, you know I've been on a journey to compare skid steer models. And no comparison would be complete without looking at a JCB because they have some of the most innovative products on the market. This teleskid is one example. With the one boom arm, you've got the side entry door, which is really convenient. Then you've got the ability to load at a lot higher height. They've got a lot of other cool things that I might touch on later in the video. But for now, I'm gonna test drive one of these. I'm also gonna test drive a New Holland because I think they're very similar to the case machines, but the dealership is closer. This machine right here, I'll put the model number on the screen, is a 12,000 pound machine, and I've been looking at 10,000 pound machines. But it's still gonna be close enough to give me a good comparison and I haven't priced any teleskids, so this one's gonna cost a little bit more, and I'll get into that in a minute. But I still think it's close enough to what I'm looking for to give us a comparison, and I'm gonna get pricing on not only this unit, but also the same size that I'm looking at. So this unit I'm about to drive here is the JCB3TS-8T. And that is a larger machine than all the other ones I've been looking at. I've been focused on staying at around 10,000 pounds. JCB is doing a lot of innovative things to disrupt the market. One is this side entry door. And to accomplish that, they have the cab shifted to the side and a single lift arm rather than the lift arms on both sides like all the other machines you see. I wondered how the teleskid compares in lift capacity and with the boom retracted it's the similar lift capacity I've seen on other machines at 3900 for this larger machine but when you extend the boom you are getting down to around 1600 pounds of capacity so you just want to be careful with what you pick up and be smart about extending that boom with a full load. Now, with this being a little bit larger machine and having the telescoping option, it's no surprise that it's the most expensive machine I've looked at at 88,000. But their non-telescoping machine that weighs 10,000 pounds is $67,000. And for comparison, the New Holland that I'm going to show you next is 65,000 for the same size of machine. So really what I'm finding is that all the brands are pretty comparable in lift capacity and price. You probably noticed right there that it was jerking me around pretty good and I had to stop here and adjust the sensitivity and then change the way I was handling the controller. I've had a couple of brands that just felt overly responsive, even though they have a setting for that. Mostly when I come to test drive these machines, the salesman comes out and kind of walks me through the features and the controls and everything. But at this particular dealership this morning, the guy was really busy, so I was just kind of winging it. On the JCB, the boom was about halfway extended, and I felt like I'd found the control that was supposed to extend that boom and retract it. But when I pushed it, it would, you could tell it was trying to move, but it wouldn't. So there was some kind of a lock preventing me from extending that. I did find the controls that alternate between the self leveling bucket and non self leveling. So it's always nice to have options like that to switch. If having the extendable boom is a $20,000 feature, I think it's hard to justify that expense to me unless you're loading larger trucks and you know that you're going to need that lift height. Another interesting note about this being a more expensive machine is I believe it's the only or close to the only machine that I've driven that didn't have a backup camera. In terms of the difference with the unique cab from JCB, 
I don't know if it's really as great as they build it up to be because you do have that extra visibility on your left side, but it's probably less visibility on the right side. And climbing in and out the side would be nice if your boom is stuck up in the air, but in any other circumstance, I actually found it a little bit cumbersome because it was a higher step than stepping over the bucket and the tracks were kind of slippery. So I didn't really find climbing in and out of it to be more comfortable. Until I happened to drive by and see this unit sitting here, I was under the impression that the nearest dealership was four hours away. And I was trying to schedule in a time that I could make that drive and check one of these out. But definitely glad I found one closer and that they have some New Holland units in stock. So I'll go take a look at those now. I almost didn't think of looking at New Holland's. Now the salesman told me that New Holland is actually the number one sales leader in ag. I didn't know that. He says if you look internationally, they sell more ag machinery than John Deere. And the parent company is Case New Holland. And as soon as I walked up to this, and I looked at the screen and the controls, I said, this feels like the Case machine I drove in Louisville. So I'm gonna give this a test drive. Same thing I said about the JCB. They don't have the exact model I would be buying because machinery is hard to come by. But this will be close enough to give me a feel for if I would want to order a new Holland. Let's give it a try. So now I've driven and gotten a hard quote from every manufacturer that has a dealer presence near me. It seems like they all make a nice machine with similar prices and similar specs, so it almost comes down to the dealer network. I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put a couple more of our videos on the screen, and I'll see you next time.